many parts of Canada, cold water fish populations have been declining for over 100 years, often due to changes in land use that impact their critical habitats. In southern Ontario alone, by the 1980s, it was estimated that 80% of the historical brook trout populations had been lost. By 2050, impacts of climate change are predicted to eliminate half of those that remain. For over 40 years, community groups and local NGOs have worked together to improve fish habitat in Lanark County. Recently, we began to improve conditions for brook trout. In streams where trout are currently present, but where their habitat had deteriorated or could be enhanced. The basic process is always the same. Gather all available information on local cold water streams from landowners, governments, and other agencies to determine which streams might benefit from rehabilitation. Once you identify a candidate stream, obtain the official permits that are required no matter how large or small your project. Also be sure to get permission from private landowners if you wish to access their land. We began with cold water streams with proven natural recruitment. Next, we selected streams with active stocking programs. In both situations, we knew the fish were there. In working to improve their habitat, we focused on two general aspects, water temperature and stream structure. There's a lot you can do for both. Begin by walking the stream to evaluate the overall habitat quality and to look for essential structural components. Trout require habitat that provides food, shelter, and space throughout the year and across their full life cycle. This includes suitable conditions in all seasons of the year for the eggs, the young fry, juveniles, and adults. When walking the stream, it's important to look for physical barriers that might prevent seasonal movement and to check water temperatures in different parts of the stream. Warm water temperatures can be the single most limiting factor on brook trout survival. The absolute upper limit is 24 degrees Celsius but it's better if temperatures stay below 16 degrees Celsius. Identifying springs and protecting their recharge areas is key to maintaining the temperature regime of a stream. Natural springs cool the water in summer, warm it in winter, and are the best spawning sites in the fall. One of the easiest actions for temperature control is the planting of shoreline vegetation. 50 to 75% midday shade is a good target for most small trout streams. At this location, the removal of forest cover has increased solar heating, and the development of a gravel pit has reduced the quality of spring water entering the stream. A recent flood event has also reduced stream bank stability. By planting trees along the shoreline, we hope to reduce solar heating and improve bank stability. For this to work, the newly planted trees must be protected from vegetative competition and wildlife damages. These mats and cages are meant to do that. Without them, all of our time, effort and money would be wasted. A well-vegetated shoreline also helps control erosion. A buildup of silt in riffles reduces embryo survival, food production, and cover needed by juveniles. In most cases, a vegetated strip about 30 meters deep will provide adequate erosion control and help maintain the undercut stream banks that are characteristic of good trout habitat.
Cover for trout is provided by overhanging and submerged vegetation, undercut stream banks, in-stream objects, and rocky bottoms. Aim for an area of cover about 15 to 25 percent of the total stream. The optimal structure for a cold water stream is a mixture of physical features called the riffle pool ratio. This is a repeating sequence of fast and slow and shallow and deep moving water. This sequence, along with well vegetated shorelines, abundant in stream cover, and relatively stable water flow, are the characteristics of a healthy cold water stream. When assessing your stream, Look for the presence of each of these features in each section of the stream. Look for an approximately one-to-one -one riffle to pool ratio. Adding underwater structures can be an effective method of improving trout habitat, if you don't try and do too much. Significantly modifying stream structure is a major undertaking and may do more harm than good. Our approach has been to keep things simple, use natural materials, and limit the use of machinery near the stream. Once the work is completed, it makes sense to set up a multi-year monitoring plan to assess the effectiveness of your stream improvements. It makes sense to do this over several years to give time for the trees to grow and the trout population time to respond.